What's up guys, Matt Day here, and today we're going to be talking about editing film scans. This is a video that I've been wanting to do for a while now just because I'm always getting questions from people. It seems like every time I post something on Instagram, someone will comment and ask if it was, you know, edited at all or if this is just a straight scan. And the, the short answer is always yes, of course it was edited. Um, but, you know, it's a really, really loaded question because there are so many different variables and things that go into this that I couldn't just go into detail every time I answer somebody and tell them, you know, what the process was for me to edit and, uh, you know, why I edited the photo. Because I, th I feel like there's like this myth of, you know, it's film so it shouldn't be edited or something. It's like, well, if, if it's, you know, if you're editing it, then it's digital or, you know, it's just, it's a really weird and messy kind of thing. And um, I, I don't think people fully understand what all goes into the process whenever you're scanning film because you're really just creating, you know, a, a digital uh, negative. You know, that's really all it is. Your film scan, you're scanning in that film and you have a digital file and you're going to be manipulating that digital scan the same way you would manipulate a print in the darkroom. Um, and there are so many variables in the scanning process itself that you know, no two scans are gonna be alike. Uh, you know, if, if you were to take the same negative and hand it to three different scanning technicians and tell all three of them, just scan that negative. Just give me a regular scan, however you think that should look. You're gonna get three entirely different looks. Uh, you know, that's just the way it is. It's all about interpretation of that negative. And uh, that's what I really wanna talk about today. We're gonna to go ahead and jump into my uh, workflow here in a minute, and I'm gonna show you guys how I edit through some film scans, but I really wanted to talk about just how important communication is and just knowing what kind of look it is that you're going for, because no matter whether you're doing it at home by yourself or you're sending it to you know a pro lab to be developed and scanned, you have to know what kind of look you're going for, because um, you know, let's say you're sending your film off to the lab, and you happen to like really uh, warm, you know, warm temperatures, bright exposures, and you know, a lot of contrast. If you don't communicate that to the lab and they're scanning in their film, they have no idea, you know, what kind of look you want. You know, some people like a really cool temperature. Some people like really low and flat contrast. It's all about personal preference and making that image look the way you saw it in your head whenever you shot it, you know. Uh, and, and there are a lot of different things that go into play, you know, with how your exposure was, what kind of film stock you were using. But just that communication makes a huge, huge difference because, you know, whenever I was working for the Fine Lab as an editor, I had multiple clients that, you know, I was working with every single week and I knew, okay, well, this person here, they like warmer images. And this person here, they like their images to be a little bit darker, a little bit moody. And, you know, there are all kinds of different looks out there. And that's why there's no right or wrong way to, you know, present your work or have that scan look. You know, you can make it ha look however you want, but I want to show you guys just how you can do that with just, you know, some simple editing like what I'm going to show you guys here in a minute and also just communication, you know, having that clear, uh, you know, representation of how you want your film to look, that makes a big, big difference. So that's why I say if you send your film to, you know, three different scanners and they all, you know, scan things how they think it should be, you're going to get three wildly different looks. And that's what I really want to show you guys and uh, just kind of show you guys, you know, some of the steps here. So uh, that's what we're going to go ahead and take a look at. All right, so we're here in Lightroom, and I've got four film scans that I've got, and I haven't edited these yet. These are imported just basic scans from the Fine Lab, and nothing was edited by me yet. These are all untouched. So what we have here, this first photo is a photo of my friend Devin, and um, I'm going to show you guys just kind of how I go through this process and, uh, you know, the kind of adjustments I'm making on just about every image and then occasionally, uh, you know, things that I'll have to do on certain images. So over here in our uh, basic panel, this is pretty much where I live for the most part. There are a couple other things that I'll work with here in the tone curve, but really the majority of my editing takes place all right here and that's it. Um, so these are not like digital raw files, you know, these are all JPEGs you can see down here. So as you make an adjustment, the tiniest adjustment is going to make a big, big difference. So unlike a raw file with a, uh, you know, a digital file, if you, you know, drag your temperature back and forth, you can make big, big jumps here and, you know, you're not going to see a huge difference. Whereas with film, we'll go ahead and drag the temperature down and crazy, crazy differences, you know, with just subtle movements. Even if I just use the arrows here, kind of hovering over the slider, move the arrows up and down, back and forth, and you can see as you're watching there, it makes a big difference. 
So uh, you can get a lot of different looks out of your film scans, but it's all going to be really, really minor adjustments for the most part. Um, now, a lot of that has to do with the film, sh the film stock that you shot, uh, you know, what your exposure was like, etc. But, you know, you can get by with a lot of uh, minor adjustments. So um, this image overall, the color does look pretty good to me. Um, I don't really see anything that jumps out of me as far as the color that needs corrected, but the contrast is the main thing that I'm looking at here. So... To me, I like a little bit more contrast, especially in my uh, shadows and black tones. So the first thing I'm going to do is go down here to the blacks, and I'm just going to start bringing this down, just hovering over it and using the arrow key rather than actually sliding it. I just like to hover over it, use the keys, and you can see here the blacks, you know, especially in the shirt he's wearing, that's the biggest difference that you're going to see, and especially kind of like in the shadows right here. But if you hit the J key, you can see these uh, you know areas of blue pop up in the shadows and what that means is that's where you're losing detail in your shadows that means these are you know complete black and the same thing will happen if you grab you know your whites bring these up you'll see areas that are you know red and that means your highlights are blowing out right there so as you're moving things around and you keep that J key uh, you know you don't have to hold the J key or anything. You can see up here it's activated whenever these little boxes are basically outlined. You can see I'll turn it off, and now they're not. Turn it back on, and you can see the, the clipping areas again. But, you know, you can, you can see those adjustments in real time as you're making the edit. So go ahead and reset things. I'll go back down, and you'll see it start to creep in just like that. You know, you can see where the blacks really start coming in. To me, I typically like to bring in that black point a good bit to really make a good rich uh, black tone in the image. We'll turn that off, and you can see it's mostly just in the shadows there. And he was wearing a black shirt anyway, um, but you know, there's obviously less contrast from the, the regular scan. So go back to what we were doing. So uh, yeah, that's basically where I would like the uh, the blacks to be. Um, in the shadows, or in, I'm sorry, in the highlights, you can bring those up a little bit to add some contrast, but nothing crazy. Um, right about there should be good. And honestly, from here, you could bring the exposure up or down, but, you know, I'm honestly pretty happy with where things are at this image. Um, I like where things are at with the color. You can see here if I cooled it down just a little bit, kind of fit with the weather. I think I shot this back in February. Um, so you can kind of cool it down just a little bit, but I mean, look, we're at, you know, negative three. It's nothing drastic. It's really, really minor. And then uh, if you hit your backslash button, you can get to a before and then hitting it again to turn it off after. Yeah, and see, and as I'm doing that right now, I can see that, you know, warmth I took out and I don't really like it as much. So I'm going to go back up here and add that back in, back to zero, and that's it. I like where the skin tones are at, and for portraits, that's really my main concern. If the skin tones are correct, then, you know, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine with where things are there. So the next image we'll take a look at, this is a photo of Molly and Nora that I shot over the summer, um, also with the Hasselblad, I'm pretty sure. And um, this one, to me, the first thing that jumps out is uh, j just a couple of things. One, I would bring the exposure up, mostly for their skin tones, and two... I see a little bit of a green cast, uh, kind of in Nora's hair a little bit right here and a little bit in the skin tones, and that's just from the light bouncing off the grass in our backyard up onto their face. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the exposure up. So I'm going to bring that up just a little bit. Right about there should be fine. We'll do a little before and after. Yeah, big, big difference, but only, you know, plus five on there. So um, I'm going to do that, but now I'm going to activate the J key again to see where things are going to be clicking, uh, clipping. And then I bring this down. You can see up there in the shadows in the top left. Bring that in a little bit more. Right about there. Turn that off. That still looks good to me. Do a little before and after look. You know, I think I'm going to bring the highlights down just a little bit too. Right there. That's better. Okay. Really, really simple stuff, but that green color is still there that I'm not too fond of. So we're going to go down here to the tone curve, and I'm going to go to the channels, and you have all these different channels here, and you also have your RGB. Um, we'll mess with the RGB in a minute whenever I show you something else, but for this, I'm going to go to the green channel. And I'm wanting to take some of that green out. So we have this tone curve here. Now if you grab basically right in the middle here, and you go up, just vertically up, you don't have to move this out or anything, but just straight up, let me reset that go up, you'll see you're going to start to add more green in the image, like that. 
turn it off, and you'll see we added quite a bit of green. Obviously, I'm going way overboard for the sake of demonstration, because if I go way down, you start to get this, you know, you know, alien skin, basically, where they're uh, having this red, purplish skin. So that's not what we want either. You want to find, you know, a good... Uh, subtle kind of adjustment in there where you're taking out a little bit of green but you know uh, nothing drastic at all so kind of bring this down just a tiny tiny bit right there looks plenty honestly um, click it on and off yeah and see I feel like I might take out a little bit of magenta because I took out some green but I want to uh, kind of remove that back overall on the image so I'm gonna go up here to the tent and I'm going to uh, basically pull out some magenta. So I'm going to hold in the option button so that way I can move in one point increments because if I don't and I just hit up or down, you see it jumps in five point increments. So if you hold down option, bring that down a little bit, maybe two. Yeah. Okay, so right there looks good to me. I'm going to do it before and after. Yeah, that looks better to me. And this is all based on personal preference. I actually think I'm going to bring this green channel that line right back up just a tiny tiny bit right there um, really really small small movements and it's all personal preference some people may not prefer to have um, as much you know magenta in the the skin tones or they might want warmer skin tones more yellow it, it all depends on what kind of look you're going for you can see here if we bring the skin tones you know warmer on the yellow up here in the temperature we we'll go to plus four you know that's a lot warmer than it was at zero like that and, you know, some of it might not jump out at you as much, but, you know, over time, you'll start to see these things, you know, a lot quicker. So right there is good for me. Um, let's do a little before and after side by side. Yeah, just basically brought the exposure up, kind of cleaned up the skin tones, and that looks perfect to me. And obviously, a lot of this stuff, especially after you do it for a while, um, you, your editing gets a lot quicker. But for the sake of demonstration, I'm trying to kind of slow things down here. But you can see here, all really, really minor adjustments. And then with that, you know, little tone curve adjustment. Now, this image here, this was shot uh, with, uh, I shot basically an entire roll in this one position. Um, I didn't move my camera, didn't change my exposure. Uh, didn't, you know, none, none of my settings were adjusted. I just uh, kind of moved him a little bit. And my scans were uh, all, you know, not wildly different, but if you would look at two consecutive frames, one would be pretty warm and one would be pretty cool. And that goes back to what I was saying earlier about the scanner is just trying to give you a rough idea. You know, it, it doesn't know exactly. So without somebody going in and making those adjustments, you're going to have some fairly inconsistent results. And that's why you know, the communication is so important. And that's why editing is important in general, because, you know, these are just basically uh, your digital negatives. You know, these are just representations and interpretations of, you know, how you want your film to look. Um, but for this image here, I wanted to go ahead and uh, pull this one in and make some edits. This one was a little bit cooler uh, as far as, you know, w the look I was wanting. And uh, I wanted to kind of show you guys a little bit of, uh, you know, warming that up. So we're going to go in here and we're going to pull in the blacks just like I always do. Activate the J key so I can see where things start to clip. And there we go. And he's wearing a black shirt. Um, and, you know, obviously with the light there and it was, you know... Uh, kind of faded you could see some of the the gray in there but I really want to pull that in and add that contrast so right about there should be good we'll turn that off kind of go back and forth might bring the black up to about right here and I'm gonna go in the shadows and it's a little bit more subtle that looks better to me right I would say right there negative 30 so this already, before and after, big, big, big difference. And again, there is no right or wrong way. This is all about your personal preference. Um, the next thing I want to do is warm it up because, uh, you know, this does feel a little bit cool. Um, mostly down here, you know, where the light wasn't as strong, whereas the light was mostly up here. This was just uh, taken with, you know, natural light coming through a window right behind me. So I'll go up here to the temperature. Kind of bring that up just a little bit. Plus three seems plenty to me. Um, let's do a little before and after. Whoops, that's not what I wanted. Uh, right there. Yeah, big, big difference, but really, really minor adjustments. Uh, and, you know, that's that's really it. There isn't a ton of, you know, process to this, really. Once you're used to it, it just uh, it kind of works. You start to know exactly how you want it to look, and you just jump in and start going for it. Uh, so that's pretty much it. 
Now, the last one here, I wanted to throw this in because this is an example of, you know, lack of communication. Whenever I shot this photo, I had the meter on this side of his face over by his right cheek, and I had the meter pointed out to the window. So there's a window right here, and then there was a window in front of him facing his face. And I had him kind of step back a little bit to where only the light was hitting the back side of him, because I wanted more of like a silhouette shot. Uh, not to where there was no detail in him in him at all, but, you know, in the dark shadows, I wanted this to all fall to black just because that's the kind of look I wanted. You know, I wanted this strong highlight, you know, kind of silhouetting him. And I didn't communicate this to the lab. I meant to write it in the notes on my order form, which is a great way to do it. Or if you forget to do that, just give them a call or an email. Uh, but, you know, I didn't communicate that with them. So I'm sure when they scanned this in, they thought, oh, okay, well, he probably just underexposed his film by accident. And, uh, you know, I was metering for the highlights, and that'll definitely do it. So, uh, you know, I, I should have communicated that with the lab, but I didn't. But it's no big deal. I can, you know, make that adjustment myself. But for them, they would have no idea that I wanted to have a silhouette shot. So they were trying to expose for, you know, the side right here that's facing the camera. So that's why this was brought up uh, in the exposure in the scanning process. So now, to correct that, I'm going to go over here to the blacks. If you're starting to see a pattern here, uh, <laughs> then you're onto something. Bring the blacks down, and you can see they all jump to you know total black in one one move once you get down far enough. But I'm going to bring them up just a little bit, right about there, and I'm going to bring the shadows down now all at once, a little bit more subtle right there. So I don't have any total black just yet. If I did, it would be right down about there. But I want it to go you know pretty dark relatively. Um, and now I want to bring the highlights up, and you'll see they'll start to clip at some point right about there. You can see all the red coming in. I don't want it to be, you know, too hot. I want to see kind of some of those curtains back there, because that's, that's what you're seeing right here in these curves, all these curtains in front of the window. So I want to see a little bit of that, and also I want to warm this up, because that's the kind of look I was thinking, you know, in my mind. There was uh, a lot of, you know, natural warmth in the room with the, uh, you know, the the wooden floors in there and everything, all the light bouncing off of it, it had a really warm look to it, so that's the kind of look I was seeing, and probably plus four, that looks about right, and you know, actually, I do think I'm going to pull these shadows down just a little bit more, yeah, right there, okay, so before and after, big, big difference, and honestly, it probably would have been much closer to this right out of the gate if I would have just told the lab, hey, I want this to be more of like a backlit silhouette kind of shot where I'm exposing for the highlights, not the shadows. Now, I want to go back to this, and I'm going to reset it because I want to show you guys a different technique. Let me go ahead and bring my temperature back up to plus four. Um, I want to show you guys what's called the J-Trick, and the J-Trick is something I learned on Kirk Maston's website uh, for Maston Labs. If you guys know uh, Maston Labs, they make presets for digital files that are made to match your film scans. That way you have a consistent look. Now, Kirk did a video a long time ago where he talked about this. And you go into your tone curve here to your channel on uh, the RGB channel. And you have your J key activated just like that where you can see up here. It's going to show us when we start to clip. Um, you don't have to, but, you know, it's called a J trick um, and for another reason as well. If you grab this point right down here in the corner for your shadows and you just pull it to the right, right here along this line, you'll see the image start to go down in the blacks and shadows to the point where it'll start to clip. Right there, like that. But we obviously don't want to go down that far to get the look we want. But, you know, you pull it down right about here, and that's about where I had it, I think. That looks pretty good to me. And now you go up here to your whites, and you pull it to the left on that same line, just like before. Let me turn the J key back on. You can see where things start to clip. Right about there should be good to me. So, just clicking that on and off, you can see the adjustments that were made. And we'll do another before and after. And you can see I got to that move, or got to that look with one move, you know, pretty quick. It was all just moving this over here and then moving that over there. And that's really it. You know, I made my little temperature adjustment before, but 
all of that can be done the same way you worked with your highlight shadows, whites and blacks, just like before. Um, it's something that I use not for everything, but for certain images, it seems to work just a little bit better. Um, but you know, it's, it's something I wanted to share just because it's helped a ton of people out there. And I wanted to share that and pass that on. Uh, Kirk has all kinds of different stuff that you guys can learn from on, you know, the Maston Labs website. They're very, very passionate about educating people on shooting film and, you know, editing their film scans, things like that. Um, you know, people, the people think that if they're making, you know, digital presets that they don't care about film, but it's literally the opposite. Uh, Kirk is very, very passionate about, you know, educating people and getting people shooting film. And, you know, he's, uh, it's, it's something I really, really admire. So definitely check that out. But um, that's really my entire process, guys. Uh, you know, it's really simple stuff. It's all working within this, this, you know, basic panel right here in the develop module in Lightroom. Uh, the only time I ever pull things into Photoshop is if there is, uh, you know, dust on the film scan that is in a really tricky spot. And, you know, just the little, uh, you know, adjustment up here. What, what do they call this? The brush tool spot removal. See, I don't know this stuff. Uh, but, you know, the that's really all only time I ever pull things into Photoshop is if it's in a really tricky spot and this thing isn't smart enough to know how to, you know, uh, blend that in if there's dust uh, using the, the heel brush, I think, or whatever it's called in Photoshop. Uh, that That's what I use for that. So that's pretty much it, guys. That's uh, That's my entire process. So there you guys have it. That's pretty much my entire workflow when it comes to editing my film scans. You know, whenever I was working for Find, all of my scans came in as basic scans, which is what I was just editing there. I didn't have anything edited by anybody else. Uh, you know, as an editor, I kind of made sense that I should be able to, you know, edit my own stuff. But, uh, you know, it's, it's all about communication. Again, I can't tell you guys how important that is. If you're sending stuff to a lab, just give them a call, send them an email, let them know that you want to set up, you know, your own kind of custom profile so they can dial in your preferences because... Like, I know what it's like to be working with somebody and, you know, I'm editing for them and I have no idea what kind of look they want. It's challenging because you have you have no idea. There are so many different directions you can take that single film scan and uh, you, you obviously you want to make it as, you know, spot on for them as perfect. You don't want them to have to edit anything. You know, that's that's the end goal. As an editor, I was trying to make sure all of my clients got exactly what they wanted every single time. And, you know, without that close communication, it's really, really hard to do that. So just make sure you guys are giving communication to your labs. And if you're doing it for yourself, you know, just scanning stuff at home, just have a clear vision. Um, obviously, there's no right or wrong way to do it. But, uh, you know, with you doing it yourself, I think it's a little bit easier to have less communication, obviously, because you're going to be talking to yourself. But just having a good idea of what kind of look you're going for, it really does help with consistency and just making sure that, you know, you're getting the work exactly how you want it to be. And I hope this kind of stuff was helpful, me just kind of showing you guys how I handle my scans. I would do the same thing with these, uh, you know, scans if I scanned them on my flatbed scanner. So uh, no matter how you're getting your film scanned, if you want to make any adjustments, hopefully some of this stuff was helpful for you guys. So if you guys have any questions though, just leave those below in the comments. And if you have any other techniques that you would recommend to people, definitely leave those below as well. So thank you guys as always for watching. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys next time.